Good afternoon to everyone in Europe. Uh, good morning to everyone joining us from the United States. Uh, my name is Andrew Castronovo, and uh, I'm an account executive here at Time Series. Welcome to Low Code Smart Apps for the marine industry. As I mentioned before, my name is Andrew Castronovo. I'm an account executive at Time Series. We're also very lucky to be joined by Jan Van Oos, uh, who is the vice president of marine industry at Siemens. Uh, Jan, would you uh, mind introducing yourself to everyone, please? Yes, of course. Uh, I had to unmute my uh, my microphone. Uh, uh, my name is Jan van Os. I'm uh, uh, the uh, industry lead for uh, for marine within uh, Siemens and uh, daily busy with uh, with the, the business development of our solutions and to uh, to make sure that they are up to date for the marine industry. I've got a, a background in uh, in naval architecture. I worked for Diamond Shipyards for almost thirty years. So. Um, I've got yeah, I've got a lots of experience uh, on nation, national and international level within the shipbuilding uh, industry. Excellent, thank you, Jan. Uh, we also are lucky enough to be joined by Yethro Borsia, who is the CTO at Time Series. Yethro, could you take a moment to introduce yourself as well? Sure, definitely. Uh, thanks, Andrew. My name is Jetra Borsche. Indeed, I'm CTO of Time Series. I've been with the company for about five years now. Um, I have a background in both computer science and economics, and my main focus in, in making uh, IT work for our customers, uh, where we sometimes do complex, uh, complex projects. My focus is in making these complex things easy, uh, so we achieve the value our customers seek when applying our technology. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Yethra. So just to uh, give you all a bit of context, um, I'll be moderating the discussion today. And we will be starting with uh, an overview, a brief overview of time series, uh, as well as Mendix. And then Jan will cover uh, the marine industry as it stands today. Uh, and Yethra will cover the smart apps that time series <clears throat> has developed for the marine industry. Then we will give an overview of what time series can offer you and how we can make you successful. And then we'll end with a live Q and A. Uh, please use the chat tool in the GoToMeeting and send the questions throughout the conversation to the organizer in that chat tool. And we will read those questions uh, to Yathro and Jan uh, at the end of the discussion. So just to give you a bit of an overview about Time Series, Time Series is the number one Mendix Innovation and Expert Services partner. Uh, we have over 250 years of accumulated Mendix experience and have officially become a Siemens, Siemens Services and Solutions partner uh, for Mendix. We have a global presence with our global headquarters in the Netherlands and our U.S. headquarters in uh, the Denver area in the United States. We have seven total op offices, over 100 enterprise customers, and we've done over 300 project implementations. And the last part here, and this is something that we will cover in much greater detail uh, throughout this webinar, is our proven quick start model with Mendix, which is our industry smart app suite templates to lower your barrier of entry mm -hmm. This is a list of uh, our, our impressive list of our enterprise customers. You'll notice here that we have a number of major marine industry clients that Yathro will cover in more detail later in the presentation. But this is just a representation of some of the great customers and organizations we have been lucky enough to work with uh, over the last number of years. So since Mendix is a relatively new tool to the Siemens solution landscape, I think it will be great to start with just a brief overview of what Mendix is and the problem that Mendix solves. So right now we live in a software-driven world. And with 
that software driven world, there are is a challenge that has arised. And that is that the business demand for net new applications is incredibly high. The business is saying, we need ex to accelerate product time to market. We need to streamline operations and cut costs. We need to digitize our entire business. And Gartner has even said that through 2021, business demand for apps will grow at least five times faster than IT's capacity to deliver it. And as a result of all these business demands, there is a huge gulf between the dem business demand for net new applications and IT's ability to deliver on this demand. And it's not like IT is doing nothing. They're saying, I'm not able to respond fast enough to business app requirements. And they may be implementing things like PaaS or cloud, DevOps, agile development. They might be trying to hire more developers, which is incredibly difficult given that the global unemployment rate for developers is around 1.5%. You might be trying to outsource development. And yet there's still this huge gap. And this is something that the founder of Mendix realized. And Mendix was created to fill that gap. And they were, we were born to help enterprises win with applications. So Mendix is the leading low code platform to create web and mobile applications. And the reason for that is it takes a model driven approach to application development. This model driven approach, rather than a traditional coding language, like say a .NET or a Java, unleashes business and IT uh, collaboration, enables organizations to create applications much faster with fewer resources. And on top of that, Mendix's ability to integrate with systems is key. With Mendix, you can connect to any ERP system or core system on the back end, like say an SAP or a Siemens uh, team center, for example. And it goes beyond just these integrations. It really gets to the point where it can help you enrich those systems as well with an application layer of Mendix on top. And that layer enables you to create uh, advanced workflows, connect data between these disparate core systems, as well as creating an improved user experience. Like for example, you can provide, like on ships, there's often limited cell service or internet connectivity. So you can create a mobile application in Mendix uh, and on a ship you can access that application with mobile and offline support. And Yathro, I think this is a great place for you to cover some of our industry specific smart app templates. Yeah, thanks for the, the brief introduction on, uh, on Mendex, Andrew. There's tons of things to tell about Mendex itself, but let's focus indeed a bit further on Marine uh, and, and, and smart app templates in general. What we've done at, at Time Services, we, we realized quickly that if you look at our customers in various industries, actually, that they uh, have common problems to solve. Uh, and each of these companies, they, they do with this in their own unique way, of course. But there are still common issues, like for example, uh, offline support uh, in, 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 the, in the inside the vessel, which we will, uh, which I will show you later how we've solved that. Um, so, so what we did is we are we have been building these what we call smart app templates, and these application templates they contain tons of functionality which address specific uh, challenges or specific opportunities which are there in your industry. Uh, later on, I will. Uh, explain to you which templates we have in Marine. But the idea of these templates in general is that they cover like 60, 70, 80, or even 90% of the way you want to, to tackle these issues. Or, or uh, And because we have those, you do not have to start from scratch every time, but we can really quickly help our customers in these different industries out with, uh, with solutions which are already uh, tailor-made for how their industry works. And then uh, with Mendex, we basically customize the last mile so we make them, uh, those templates, you make them uniquely fit in, in, the, in the way the business processes are organized inside your company. But because we have these templates, we already start with many building blocks and even complete working processes, which are uh, already uh, uh, solving all these commonalities. Um, we've been doing this together with the domain experts from Siemens, just like Jan, for example. Uh, 
um, in various industries. Uh, today, let's dive further into marine uh, to see uh, what we've done there. Absolutely. And Jan, I will just make you a presenter quickly. So can everybody see my slides? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's good. Okay, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, let's talk about marine and, and what is keeping us busy in marine and the future of marine. If you look at marine, then we've got four major uh, topics uh, about the future, uh, sustainability, interconnection, a cost uh, sensitive of the marine industry and the high tech. If you look at sustainability, then uh, the future of marine is sustainable. Uh, if we're looking at the EMO regulations uh, and the compliance uh, with the greenhouse gases and, and, and the fact that it's becoming stricter and stricter, then we have to cope with that and we have to make sure that we can design our vessels uh, up to the, 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 the latest regulations or let's say even future uh, regulation because the regulations are there. We have to reduce uh, greenhouse gases by 50% in 2050, but they aim even for 70%. So we have uh, an expectation there, which is higher than what we have to achieve. And that means also that we have to transition to cleaner fuels. And that is not always uh, always easy. The, the normal fuels which, which ships are, are, are using, they have to, to, to change or the mix has to change. We have to look at, uh, at LNG, which, which is already uh, quite common, but we also have to look at hybrid uh, propulsion system, complete electric uh, systems, but also to, to, to maintenance and even, even uh, iron or iron oxide uh, can be a, a good alternative uh, as, as a fuel in the future. And uh, on the other hand, there is also a uh, corporate social responsibility with the traceability in the supply chain. Consumers like like you and me, when we buy stuff, we can we can see due to that traceability where our products are being made, but also how our products are being shipped, and 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 the shipping is part of it. So the whole shipping should have a, a responsibility to uh, to be sustainable. So. There's only one way uh, forward, and to to is uh, to to embrace that sustainability and make sure that we are prepared in our industry to cope uh, with uh, the challenges uh, of this of this trend. Uh, interconnected. Um, what you see is that you have to design and build anywhere. Uh, it's it's a global business. It's a global corporation. It's an interaction with local supply chains that can be in one country, but it can also be in multiple countries. Um, and there's a scalability and extensibility in that. Uh, it's not only that we are building ships in, in, in the country of origin, but uh, more and more countries are asking uh, shipbuilders to build ships in, in their own country and to, to do um, knowledge sharing and building up expertise in that country to support their own shipbuilding uh, force. And that means that you that you need to have a scalable and extensible uh, solution uh, to uh, to support that. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the future is interconnected, and that's it's all about data transfer. It's starting with social media. All the crews on board they want to uh, be connected with their home front. They want to have internet. They want to 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 have connection to social media. They want to see what the kids are doing, what their parents are doing, what their friends are doing. So that that's that's very important. And nowadays that's that's possible, but still. Uh, the bandwidth of data uh, in the middle of the sea is, is much smaller than what we uh, experience on, on land. Uh, on the other hand, uh, ship owners uh, want to have big data from their vessels, how they are operating, uh, and also to use that big data for um, predictive maintenance and, and, and other operational uh, improvements they, uh, they want to do. Uh, last but not least, data transfer is also very important if we are looking at autonomous vessels. Uh, autonomous vessels is, is technically possible, but if you look at the amount of data which has to be transferred, uh, then it's quite uh, quite challenging to do that uh, for all vessels which are sailing on the, on the seven seas uh, with the, uh, with the uh, actual bandwidth at the moment. Uh, cost sensitive, uh, yeah, that, that's that's uh, that's uh, an easy one. Uh, but uh, uh, 
owners have to to look at their operational costs. That's that's not new. If you see, again, uh, with the crisis where we are in, that that freight rates are are, are lower. The the war the trade war uh, was not helping. Um, so operators have to reduce their operational costs and have to look at all kinds of. Uh, possibilities to to do that uh, predictive maintenance, maintenance lower uh, energy consumption so less fuel costs but also looking at optimized crew manning uh, with increased automation uh, and support of electronics this all uh, as a as a step towards uh, autonomous shipping because if you look at a, at a vessel and the cost of a vessel and what it's costing in operation then a big part of that is is the crew on board um, so supporting that crew, um, uh, not only for safety reasons, but also for uh, reducing the cost for the operations uh, is, uh, is, is a key thing and a key trend. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, uh, also new business uh, models uh, are coming into uh, our area where you are not only looking at, 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 at building a vessel or owning a vessel, but more at leasing a vessel or let's say power by the hour that you are only paying for uptime. So those new business models uh, uh, are possible and they are only possible if you are able to capitalize on your vessel's data and feeding that vessel data back into uh, into your, your, your digital twin. And last but not least, uh, the, the, uh, the future of shipping is also high tech. Uh, if we are looking at, at shipping, then you see more flexibility, more modularity and adaptability in, in some segments, uh, not only in the Navy segment, but also in the, in the, in the yachting. You see more uh, toys on board. Uh, let's say ship owners or yacht owners don't want to be in the Mediterranean uh, the, whole, the whole summer. They want to go to remote places. They want to go to Antarctica. They want to go to the North Pole, they want to go to the Galapagos. And that means that they want to have more uh, toys on board. So that means also that those vessels are getting bigger and more complex. Uh, you see also uh, more advanced uh, equipment and systems on board. Uh, there is an interconnection between almost everything. So that means uh, more equipment, more electrical, more cables, more of everything. So that makes uh, ships more complex. Uh, and there is also a rapidly changing uh, requirement uh, around technical uh, stuff. So, so the, the pace of acceleration of technical technological uh, um, innovation is, is is very high, and also if you look at, at uh, autonomous shipping, that that's going quite fast. And before we know, within a decade, uh, lots of those vessels are sailing uh, on the seas, and that means that we have to cope with this. And for that, I say only integrated smart shipyards can future prove their success. Uh, because if you look at those trends uh, and if you look at what, what you have to cope with with designing and operating uh, a vessel and, and feeding the data back uh, into the digital twin to optimize uh, uh, future operations and, and, and future designs, uh, then you need to have the solutions uh, in place and the digital twin in place to do that. And only the, 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 the shipyards who are investing in that, uh, they can they can survive. And if you look at that, that complexity, if you look at all those requirements, uh, if you look at all those, those challenges which we have uh, at the moment, which we have today, but also which we have to do tomorrow, and you look at the complexity uh, of that, and you combine it with the complexity of our industry um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a building industry, the processes are that complex. It, it's almost one of the, it's one of the most complex industries if you count everything up. It's not only the design, and of course you can imagine that there are uh, space um, uh, vehicles which are much more complex to design. But if you look at the complexity of a vessel and the complexity of building, then the whole situation is quite complexity. And uh, we say that 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 you have to embrace that complexity and make it your competitive advantage. Uh, advantage, and let's say the the. The companies who are able to do that, they will have an advantage uh, uh, in the future. If you look at our our uh, our offerings, uh, then uh, we've got three pillars. Uh, one is comprehensive digital twin. You need to have a comprehensive digital twin to to cope with all those challenges. But on the other hand, you also want to personalize. Uh, your system in such a way that you can cope with with, with requirements from from partners, from from co-makers, and from your clients. And you want to have a flexible, open ecosystem where you can connect with 
other software uh, or with, with, with software from, from, from customer, customers and partners. So those three pillars are, are, are very important for a sustainable uh, digital future for, for shipbuilding. And yeah, what I say is if, if, if you really look at digitalization within shipbuilding, then there are three uh, pillars which will form the golden triangle. And, and, and there we are also coming to the whole Mendix uh, connection to, uh, to Marine. Um, we've got the ERP system. Most shipyards nowadays, they have an ERP system in place. Not every shipyard has a PLM system in place. And, and, and they say, yeah, a PLM can be done by ERP. That's not true. Those two backbones are necessary for a yard to have, and they are complementary. They have a gray area where they overlap, but they are complementary, and you cannot have uh, uh, one system without, without the other. ERP is for the logistics, PLM is for the product. But the third one is, is, is getting even more uh, important, and that's MOM, and that's not, not something which is really landed in shipbuilding, uh, and that's the manufacturing uh, management. Uh, nowadays, it's, it's, it's often um, home, homegrown software, Excel sheets, etc., or, or there's nothing at all. But if you look, look at those three backbones uh, and you want to, to connect those three, those are quite rigid. Uh, they've got different architectures, but you want to have information from the logistics from your ERP. You want to have information from your product from PLM. And from the MOM area, you want to have information about planning. So what should be there uh, to plug in in those three systems and get the right information out in an easy way? And there, Mendix is, is coming in uh, in, our, in our offering, and Mendix is, is a Siemens solution. Uh, and... Um, one of the of the of the yeah, top priorities uh, within our within our portfolio to connect uh, those backbones. And if you, if you look in, in in the top, you can see if you look at uh, at, at the possibilities. And Jetro will 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 uh, discuss more about what Time Series is doing with Mendix. But you can talk about all kinds of of applications uh, which are using parts of uh, of those backbones to make it easier for the shipbuilder to do his job and with inclination, inclination tests where you directly have a connection to your product, to your general arrangement, to your 3D model, uh, smart warehousing, looking at ERP, but also all kinds of ship inspections. You can imagine that you are doing some ship inspections and that your, the, the, let's say the, the notes which you are making are directly connected to your 3D model and to your PLM, PLM system. So when you are online, uh, your notes are in the system and everybody can see what, what, what is happening. Uh, the same with noise measurements. Uh, you make the measurement and directly the measurement is uh, connected to uh, the room where you, where you took it. Issue management is, is, is one of the main things uh, during the building of a vessel. If you, if you are able to manage that in such a way that you can connect it to the visuals of the model, you are a few steps ahead. Uh, and, and maybe the most important is smart planning. <clears throat> where you have the enterprise tools, but you don't have to have the visuals. If you look at, at, at uh, infrastructure, uh, they are talking about uh, 3D, 4D, 5D, even 6, 7, and 8D plannings. Uh, but can you imagine that you have all your visuals? You've got your enterprise planning. You've got your cost incorporated, and we're talking about 5D planning. And you have it all in one application where you can look at. That would be fantastic, and that's possible with, uh, with, uh, with, with Mendix, building those apps, plugging in into those 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 backbones so that that's that's why the whole mendix offering uh connected to to to, to any system that 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 can be be seen a system that can also be another system is important for uh, for marine um so that I'm, I'm, I'm giving it back to you so that you can show a little bit more about uh, what you are doing and how you can help our customers in marine uh, to uh, to uh, yeah improve their production and and, and make them smarter Thank you, Jan. Thanks for this uh, for these insights. Uh, really valuable to see the, the Siemens vision and knowledge uh, in this marine industry. I expect everybody can see my slides by now. I'm looking at this correctly, yeah. Um, so what we have done uh, at Time Series, uh, uh, looking at marine, is that we've built these 
these app templates, which I uh, previously uh, quickly mentioned, um, as a way of of uh, help our customers manage this this complexity, as Jan uh, just uh, outlined. Uh, because of course the the the, 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 the rules and regulations are changing, sustainability is an issue, but also time to market needs to be faster. We need to be more safe in in how we build chips and what we do. Um, so in order to quickly adapt to all of these changes and be efficient, uh, we believe Mendex is the perfect tool. Uh, and we have a few uh, templates which would help you along um, to, uh, to to be smarter in the way you do your work. So what I'd like to do with you is walk through a few of these templates. Uh, for some of them, we have some demo videos uh, prepared so we can also show you how it works. Uh, so let's start with that. So the first step is uh, inclination tests. Uh, Jan already mentioned this. Uh, we are working with Lutin, for example, in Germany. And um, what we see there is what we saw, the, what we saw in general at our customers is that lots of these processes which you do on the board of your ship, they are done on paper. Uh, people print these big, big general arrangement plans per deck. They walk through a ship and they do a task. For example, they prepare for an inclination test. Um, and when you do these processes on paper, it's very error prone and also very time consuming because once you're back in the office, you have to type, retype everything in Excel or whatever other tool you may have or Team Center. Um, and this is a fairly time consuming process. It, lots of errors are made. So, what we did is we built an application for um, inclination test preparation where you can record all the missing weights and the misplaced weights. Uh, and in real time, you can calculate the center of gravity. Uh, on the ship, so you know if you're ready for the test. Um, so let me show you how this works. So this is uh, the demo of the application. Uh, of course, this is the login screen. Uh, we will log in shortly. Um, so what you're about to see is a user logging in. And once he has logged in right here, he can see all the ships that he um, that he has. Uh, and you click on a ship, you get to see all the decks, uh, all the uh, general arrangements. And here you and you can all do all of this on your tablet. So what you would do is uh, the, you would open the app. It will download all the information for you when you're in the office. And then while you walk towards one of the ships, you click. I'm going to ship one, two, uh, whatever. Um, and once you're on board of the ship, you pick the deck which on which you're on. Um, and that would bring you to this view where you see the deck in more detail. Uh, all offline in your tablet, so you don't have to have any connectivity. And here you can indicate where you are. For example, here in a certain lounge. Um, there is this kind of two-dimensional coordinate system where we can kind of uh, do some calculations and we also know about Z-indexes, so the heights of the decks. And uh, based on that information and, and where you click, we know uh, this is Lounge 101 in this example, and you can do your task. Now, in this uh, template for inclination test preparation, this is about recording the missing shifted and additional weights. For example, a glass door is missing here. It has a certain weight and uh, a certain department is responsible for this. But you can record all of this while you walk through the ship. And uh, well, at the end of the day, or no matter how long it takes, you have visited all the decks, all the rooms, you've, you've done all your things. And then you would say, well, I would like to have a report or I would like to calculate my center point of gravity. And the app can do this for you in real time. It will also notify you in terms of uh, you're almost past that tipping point that you can no longer do the test. Uh, and this will give you very valuable information really quickly instead of what we saw at some of our customers in the past doing this on paper, even taking a few days before the entire calculation was completed because it has to retype everything in an Excel sheet. Right now, when you leave the ship, you push the button, right away you have all the results. You can download all kinds of reports in Excel format. You can export data to other systems if you want to. Um, and all of this uh, is supported offline when you walk inside the vessel. Once you do have connectivity, the app will automatically sync all the data back to the cloud. So, of course, it will never get lost. And you can even do this with multiple people in parallel working on different decks, and the data will get merged together once you send it to the cloud. So you can even do your preparations quicker if you want to do this. Um, so this is an example of what we are doing with inclination test preparation. Let's continue to the next one. This is about uh, tracking and tracing. Because as you know better than I do, that um, uh, many of the, the ship builders work with lots of subcontractors, oh, wait, lots of suppliers, and um, different uh, parties uh, at the yard. They order equipment, they order all kinds of goods and, and materials for to, to work with. 
and everything gets delivered at the yard and these things sometimes get misplaced so uh, it's arrived somewhere it's placed in the warehouse it may get replaced a few times because it's in the way of something else and at some point these goods or materials or tools they might get lost what we did is we built an application which is capable of doing these material flows uh, and it's interfaces with QR codes, with uh, barcodes, with RFID. So we can connect to all kinds of hardware and scanners. So we can automatically keep track of where things are. For example, if stationary RFID readers reread everything which is entering and leaving the warehouse using RFID technology. So we always know where the things are. We can even have RFID readers uh, where they load things on the ship. So we know if it actually arrived on the ship, we can, with some workflow configurations, determine if it's the proper ship, is it on time, is it too late, are we maybe lagging behind? So even some can, can slowly go towards planning, saying I need these things to arrive on my ship at this date, and I've scanned and I've, I've seen they're not yet there. So all these, these kinds of things which are about logistics on your yard and in your warehouses, this application can help you out with that, and it can uh, help you gain insight in, uh, in your planning. We have, for example, a case uh, where we connect this to a 3D model, and we can show in real time which things have arrived on the ship, uh, and based on that, they can color it in the 3D model with a different color, so they can quickly see is it on time or not, has it been uh, delivered on the, at the ship, uh, those kinds of, uh, of cases. So that is a um, that is definitely a possibility. Well, furthermore, as we've been talking about uh, uh, doing things on board the ship, um, Jan also talked about this. Um, if you want to be more more efficient, you want to eliminate these uh, paper processes. But also, when you're doing inspections, you want to be compliant. So we have several customers, both in marine, but also in other industries where inspections are due, for example, in energy utilities, um, where they say we need to carry out certain inspections at a regular interval, or we need to do certain inspections to, in order to be compliant to, raw, to laws and regulations. So we want to have an app which guides our ins inspectors through this process. Uh, for example, they get a guided questionnaire, which is configurable, of course, and then it tell you, tells you do this task, do this task, read out this meter, and if the value is between certain boundaries, you get three additional questions or you need to do an additional task. Um, those kinds of, of, of configurable questionnaires, we have wrapped in an app as well, which again, it can also work offline, even in combination with uh with the same map you just saw for the inclination test preparation so you can use this on board your ship but you can also use this to inspect uh your your equipment or your your tools and all other things you have uh, usually like cranes which you usually have on the yard uh, and we also have hardware integrations with this inspection app so for example a paint thickness scanner which can be used to uh, to obviously scan how thick the paint is at certain places uh, we've built an app for this uh, with Siemens at the Hackathon, for example, where we've shown that we could integrate this in a day. And via Bluetooth, we, we had this paint thickness uh, scanner attached and it would, uh, would do the scanning. And we report back to the app the, the thickness of the paint. And based on that, we could send alerts or we could say, well, this is not thick enough. So we can raise an issue somewhere else, for example, in Team Center. And once you start to do this, you can see that your operational efficiency on board of the ship will quickly increase because you are automating a lot of things and you are also reducing the risk of errors. Um, and you also have for the future, uh, you, you store all this information like inspections, your paint, paint thickness readings or whatever you do on board. So for future reference, once the ship goes into, is delivered or goes into service or needs to be checked for other things, you have a a fairly strict track record of everything you did instead of all these papers uh, lying around and which might get lost and um, so it's really about being more efficient but also about being compliant well, we can show you how this works actually uh, in the world of issue management i can make this full screen so what you're about to see here is an application where um, people which people use with a tablet again on board to walk across the ship, uh, do checks um, and raise issues, which can be assigned to, for example, a subcontractor or a supplier, but which can also be sent to Team Center. So what you see here is uh, when the user logs in, he can see all the issues which are assigned to him. Um, but what he can also do is raise new issues, of course. You can do this in various different ways. You can here in the, in the menu pick I'm in this particular room. Uh, I have an issue here. For example, the paint is not thick enough, or we forgot to install wallpaper or stuff like that. 
Uh, however, if you are, for example, on board of big cruise vessels, it would, uh, there are many, many rooms, of course. So what we implemented is a QR code scanner and you can outfit uh, during the construction cycle, these rooms with labels or the decks with labels or subsections. And uh, when you scan the QR code, you know where you are. And based on that, you can already pre-fill some of the fields. Then you can raise your issue, uh, like my wallpaper is missing, for example, and you can assign this issue to a specific uh, contractor. And then he will get a notification saying you have an issue, uh, you may need to fix this or you may need to do something about it. Uh, and once that is done, um, and it has a due date, obviously, in those kinds of things, um, the other people, person will get a notification. What you can also do, again, in offline mode without uh, having any connectivity, create pictures uh, of what you see at this issue. And they are also uploaded with the ticket. And once you have connectivity, all of this will be sent to the cloud. So you can also say, well, this is really not good enough. Subcontractor, you made a mess. This is how I encountered the situation. So you can also have some kind of proof of what you've seen. Um, this issue will now be sent to the person who needs to, to solve it in the assigned issues list. And then you can pick it up. Uh, the person can say, well, uh, I fixed it. Uh, I, I cleaned up my, my stuff or I or placed my tools back or I, I installed the wallpaper. But of course, a um, person can also say, well, I don't agree with this issue and you can reject it. So there is this fairly basic workflow around issue management here in an app, which everybody can use on board on his phone or tablet, or just in the office, of course, people in the office can also look what's going on. And these issues can also be sent back to team center. So if there are really serious issues, a project manager can say, well, um, this is something you will no longer handle in the scope of this small issue management app. We will send it further to team center because for example, uh, the engineering or design departments need to do something with this. But there also, you can also tie this back into uh, the more, the, their PLM system if you have it. So I think that's an important consideration. Finally, of course, you do not have to use the 2D uh, map. You can also, or the, the, the QR code scanner, you can also use a two-dimensional arrangement plan again. And we're currently working with Mendex on uh, seeing how we can implement a 3D view in here. So you have a three-dimensional model of your ship. You can imagine as these three-dimensional models are fairly big, um, we have to see how we, we solve that issue from a technical perspective. However, that's definitely on our radar. Um, so that's the way we want to move forward with these types of applications, allowing the user to really easily identify where he is and do his job. So um, another customer of ours um, is, is are the Royal Boatmen uh, from Rotterdam. It's interesting to mention this because uh, we've been talking a lot about shipbuilders, but we're also working with uh, many suppliers in this area uh, and also with other people who have a role in the marine industry in general. Uh, the Rotterdam Boatmen Association, what they do is they uh, are responsible for all the mooring of the ships in the Rotterdam Harbor. They have a device called short tension, it will be shown in the movie, and it's about uh, making sure we can safely moor uh, big container vessels uh, uh, in the Rotterdam Harbor. What we've done is we are integrating with this big piece of equipment using uh, IoT and big data technology, and we can in real time monitor if the ships are safely secured. And we, we give this information to the boatmen, obviously, but also to the ship captains. They get an app and they can in real time see if their vessel is stable. Um, and this is really important for safety regulations. I think it's an interesting case to show you because it's about leveraging IoT data uh for our customers yeah my name is eric de neef and i'm working for the royal boatman company and since the last five years i'm responsible for the whole company as the chairman uh, we are taking care of mooring for 125 years everything was done by hand and we had a, a big accident when a vessel broke loose of her mooring lines and now it's in control by a short tensioning system and that device absorbs the energy coming from the vessel and then stabilizes the vessel, so the vessel will not move anymore. Everybody who owns the short tension all around the world is able to monitor the system via the applications of, uh, of time series. From your mobile device or from your laptop, uh, everybody is able to monitor the system, how the forces on the moving lines are doing, and how the movements of the vessel is controlled by this short tensioning system, thanks to these applications. Well, this shows you briefly what we do in, um, 
in this industry in, in different domains. Um, another thing in the, our smart app template suite for Marine is about, and Jan brushed over this already, uh, I personally think this is one of the most powerful ones, is about integrating your, your systems of record or your, your core back office systems like ERP. I think probably most of you have FSAP or some other form of uh, like IFS uh, or some other form of ERP system. And if you probably also have a uh, team center or other PLM system, um, if not think about it, of course, because it's important. But um, what we see happening is that both of these big core back office systems, they contain valuable information. But the combination of these two systems is even more powerful. If you can get the data from both systems and you can work with it, then um, you can unlock uh, completely new workflows. Right now, we see many customers uh, letting their employees struggle of using both systems at the same time for one particular task. So, for example, imagine you have are responsible for replacing a part in a piece of equipment. Um, you have to log into Team Center to check out the bill of materials. That's maintained bomb. You will have to check which components are in there. You pick the proper component. Ah, and then you know what you need to do. You need to go to SAP. You need to check if that particular piece is in inventory. If so, you need to decrease it there, and then you need to change the bill of materials again because you want to make sure that serial numbers add up and the bill of materials is always up to date, right? Well, because this is, both of these systems are not the most user friendly to use, and both of these tasks, there's lots of clicking around, lots of administrative tasks, we see lots of companies who struggle with keeping this bill of materials up to date. Well, at the same time, they also struggle with keeping their inventory up to date. And, and, and the last part, you also have an employee which is fairly frustrated because he has to struggle through all of these screens. Well, he just wants to do a simple task, replace a part. So what we do with Mendex often, in many cases, this part replacement is a demo you'll see, uh, but um, we connect Mendex on top of both Team Center and SAP, and we combine the data in the two systems and we can lock all kinds of workflows across these systems. So we're not in the business of replacing these systems, but we're in the business of making smart use of the data in these underlying backends because you want to facilitate your users or employees in doing this in an efficient way. And you also want to make sure that they keep the information up to date. So um, let me show you how this works. Uh, when you log into the system, uh, what a user can do is he can, um, he can uh, search for the bill of materials and he can look it up in uh, in Team Center and he sees the entire list, but all the, the whole list is shown in Mendex. So you don't have to log, log in in the, all these complex systems anymore. Basically, you would just use uh, Mendex as your front end, uh, like you see here, and it will pull all the data from both Team Center and SAP. So once you, the screen will show right now, once you search, it will read the bill of materials from Team Center, it shows in the Mendex, but this is the same bit of materials if you look at it in the Team Center. You can click a component and you can say, I want to replace it. It loads the inventory from SAP. You say replace, inventory is decreased here in, um, in SAP. And automatically, if the same push of the same button, also, as you can see here, the serial number in the bill of materials in, is updated in Team Center. Furthermore, you can also show 3D models, uh, of course. Uh, you can attach IoT data to these 3D models to see how those things are behaving. And we've also brought all of this functionality to a mobile device. So once you're on, uh, walking on around your yard, you can look at the issues you have in the team center. You can say, I want to pick one issue up. Um, I can take a picture of what you're seeing. Uh, you can fix the issue. Um, and you can also then update again the bill of materials in a different view here in a mobile application. You can even let a user or manager sign off on your task and then the issue is solved and it will be sent, in, it will be synced to Team Center when you have connectivity again. So here in a simple application, both for mobile and web, you saw that we can connect both Siemens uh, Team Center and SAP and with one click of a button, you can keep both systems in sync. And I think you can apply this to many, many different processes you do in your business today. Um, and you will achieve two things. One, being more efficient, uh, because you take less time struggling to both systems at the same time. And two, you know, make sure they're up to date more because people are no longer uh, making mistakes and forgetting one of a few of the steps they have to do in this complex backend systems. And of course, finally, as an added bonus, you will have more happy employees because the user interfacing in these Mendex apps usually is much more user friendly than you would see in both SAP and Team Center. Well, finally, before we get to the questions, 
I will do this real quick. Uh, we also have an application or a template in the field of planning. Uh, Jan also talked about this briefly. Uh, specifically, if you look at field service planning, um, uh, we are working with some uh, suppliers and subcontractors in the marine industry who also have field service engineers. While they have the question of how do I plan my field service engineers efficiently, taking into consideration the certifications they have, their availability, travel times, but also service level agreements you may have with your customers. Well, we have you have been using artificial intelligence to automatically create these plannings. So. Uh, we can make sure that the right person gets the right job uh, in the most efficient way, which reduces the need for manual planning, and that takes up that saves up a lot of time. Uh, we've seen customers being 40% more efficient with their entire field service engineer workforce because they applied this type of technology, or actually this technology. Um, we've also seen uh, interest from shipbuilders who are moving from just engineering these ships into also servicing them during the lifespan of the ships. And then you quickly run into this issue because you need proper planning tools to schedule your field service engineers. Well, this was quickly what we, uh, our, our templates. So how do we offer these? Um, what we do usually is um, we do a fit gap analysis. So if a company is interested in one of these templates, in a day we discuss what the template does and how your business operates in a specific domain, for example, the inclination test. And after a day, we know to what to which extent an application fits. So, um, for example, you may work a bit differently, your workforce may be slightly different. Based on that, we can, in a week we can make you an offer saying, uh, well, the application fits to a certain degree. Uh, and Furthermore, uh, we need to do certain customizations to make it really uniquely fit to your uh, to your to your business process. Now, after the offer, uh, once a project starts, usually in two weeks we'll go live with the first version. Sometimes uh, a lot faster actually. Um, so it's really agile and really quick. And after the first go live, we start to gather feedback from real users, and we can fine tune it in a second sprint or a second uh, set of two weeks if that's necessary. But Often when we see people using these templates, if they're a good fit, a typical project would take a few days up to a few weeks and then you're done. Of course, there is a license fee involved here. It's usually it's around between a couple of hundred euros to a couple of thousand euros a month, depending on how well the, the, um, the template fits and how big the template is. So, um, of course, you can imagine if the template fits completely and you have many users, it's more expensive than if it, uh, you only use small parts out of the template and you, or you have a little bit less users. So that kind of depends on, uh, on how you apply the technology. But uh, this is how we go around doing these projects. Uh, and we see that it really helps if you discuss around the template, because then you're not talking about a technical IT toolbox, you're talking about an already working solution, you just tailor it to your uh, needs. I think that's really powerful. Andrew, uh, due to time, we should do this really quickly because we should answer some questions. But can you tell us a bit how we can help our customers in general with Mendex besides these templates? Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Yathro. So, as Yathro said, how can time series make you successful with Mendix? Well, one way is a rapid delivery of custom apps, and that's either through these smart apps. Or if you're looking to build something custom, we recommend you just get started in Mendix. And that can be through a small pilot package within Mendix, um, during which we can help you build that application on the time series side, prove out the value of Mendix, and do portfolio workshops with your team, um, where you can be set up for future success with an enterprise um, adoption of the Mendix platform. We also provide support and setup of your internal Mendix Center of Excellence. That can be Mendix training and enablement, code delivery, architecture workshops, app health checks, government, governance, and more. And then on the Siemens side, if you are a partner of Siemens, we do have a partner to partner program. And as we've illustrated in this webinar, we do have a number of Mendix experts on our team both on the product side and the sales side. So we can work with you if you're a partner of Siemens and provide a high quality framework for vendors to leverage the Mendix expertise of time series for your customers or your prospective customers. And uh, on that note, Yathra, I think it would be a great time to uh, dive into some questions 
that uh, the audience have been kind enough to ask us during this webinar. Cool. Thanks, uh, Shoots. Tell me. I'm curious. Yathro, I think this would be a, a great one for you. The question is, have you used the template for issue management for multiple shipyards already? The reason the question is being asked is uh, for flexibility with workflows. Uh, yes, that's a good question. Um, we've been using this template both in marine and outside marine. So uh, workflows about issue management and inspections in general, actually. Uh, for example, in the utilities industry. And uh, what we see there is, uh, yes, the workflows, of course, often are different. Parts of this are configurable, like which states should an issue have. Um, but with Mendex, um, because you develop so fast, if there are more advanced changes in workflow needed, that's, that's exactly the part where we say, let's see how good the template fits and where we need to um, customize it further to the specific needs uh, of a customer. So it depends on how far it deviates from the uh, original template. But uh, with Mendex, we adapt it really fast, like a matter of days or weeks. So we have not come across a case yet, which is so complex that we said this is this is not solvable with Mendex at all, or that it will become wildly expensive. Um, and of course, the template also contains more features like the maps and the way we work offline, which is generally applicable in either case. Excellent. Thanks for that. And the Thank next you. question. The next question is, uh, can we use our Mendix design system for the apps or do we have to go with time series look and feel? Uh, that's a good one. Yes, you can go with your own design system. Um, Mendix has this uh, UI layer, of course, where you can uh, you can have, all the, if you, especially if you follow Atlas UI, the UI framework, you can have your own set of, of rules about how an application looks. This is, I must say, this is, in 100% of the cases or 99% of the cases we do, this is part of the customization. That's also why we always say it, does, it will never fit 100% because for sure you want to make sure your logos are in there, your colors are in there, it adheres to your standards, you may need to integrate with your own single sign-on. So this is always part of the customization, um, uh, which we can do for you, or if you have your own Mendex capabilities, you can even do it yourself, of course. Um, but yes, definitely we would integrate your own styling. It will always look like your application. But another good one for you, Yathro, is do you ever encounter systems or old versions of systems that you are not able to integrate or that are particularly difficult to integrate with Mendix? Ah, yes, of course, there are systems which are too old or hard to integrate with. We get this question regularly. Um, but there is a bonus because um, as a company, Time Series uh, uh, started before where uh, Mendex was there, or before we actually became a Mendex partner, we did uh, already many IoT and big data projects, which means we have a dedicated innovation team um, uh, centralized in the Netherlands, which is capable of integrating with all kinds of hardware and software using different types of technologies, not only Mendex. So what we've seen in practice, if you come across a system which is really hard to integrate with the connectors Mendex provides you out of the box, it should already be a fairly exotic system because Mendex is really good at integrations and there are many default connectors. Then we uh, scale up and we apply the skills of the innovation team to see if we can use other technology to kind of build a glue layer between Mendex and the, the systems uh, the customer may have. You also do this often if you want to integrate Mendex with hardware, because there, of course, are so many protocols that change every day. So usually you would build a small glue layer which transforms the way these hardware things work towards what Mendex will understand. For example, for Mitsubishi, we've done this for elevators where we can basically control elevator units from a Mendex application with a bit of glue code in between. Excellent. And this one uh, is a great question for you, Yathro, based on uh, the background in time series that you, you just uh, alluded to briefly. And that's, are there any templates for data analysis, big data, diagnostical models, et cetera? That's a good question. Um, there are two things sides to that question always. You have the actual doing analysis part. You may want to use machine learning tools like TensorFlow or Apache Spark or, or, or other proprietary cloud tools or open source. Uh, that's analysis part where you have a bunch of data and you want to analyze this. Or MindSphere, if you have IoT data and you have Siemens MindSphere, you can use that for IoT data. But then once you have a piece of analytics, you need to, of course, also show to the end user 
what the results are. You have to kick off some workflows maybe or do other things or then go further with it. That's a reposition Mendix. So yes, we have templates around generating insight into a vast amount of data using NRT technology. Mendex would give you all the insights for the end users, but usually on the back end, there is a little bit of uh, extra software which does the handling of all of these IoT uh, uh, data points or which does the analytics. So we have our own IoT platform, which is doing this for years now for big customers. Um, we can also use uh, Siemens MindSphere for that. And then Mendex would be the application layer, which creates insight in these vast amount of data. So we usually make the distinction, distinction between the analytics layer, where you want to use best of breed machine learning tools, for example, and you have the application layer, which in our case always or usually is Mendex, where you really make it visual and integrate again with ERP or team center stuff to, to create the data more context and then do your workflow. Thank you, Yetro. Uh, where is the cloud hosted that Mendix uses, Yetro? Ah, that's a good one. Mendix is using uh, the AWS cloud. That's the Mendix cloud that runs in Amazon. Uh, however, Mendix has an awesome deployment model. I think it's really uh, advanced because you can also deploy in other clouds. For Azure, there are default images, but Mendix is cloud agnostic nowadays. So you can uh, deploy to, all, to every cloud you want, and you can also deploy on-premise. So we have customers, for example, in the factories who really want the Mendix application, Hydro, for example, aluminum extrusion uh, factories in the US. They use Mendex on the shop floor. And you can imagine, even if the the, the, the internet cable would, would, would be broken, their, their factory shouldn't stop. So there, if they are deploying Mendex on-premise physically in the factory on hardware there, so their business processes are never in danger of being, uh, or ne never, never jeopardized when internet goes down or the connectivity layer breaks. So you can deploy in any cloud. Default is Mendex Cloud AWS, uh, but you can even go on-prem. Excellent. Thank you for that. And just this will be the last question. Um, and you covered this briefly in the overview of uh, the templates. But what is the business model for time series for selling the template? Or it's just configuration cost for the customer plus the Mendix license? Um, yes. Yeah, so our business model is uh, twofold here with the templates. Uh, it's a bit of project cost, implementation cost, uh, and it's the license recurring for the use of the template. Um, and there are also uh, situations where you might go perpetual, but that's not usually a good case because if you have recurring, uh, if, if you have the license, you also get upgrades, for example. Um, so um, that's the business model, doing the projects, the implementation side of things uh, and having the licensing there. However, um, uh, of course, we have customers who already have their own Mendex development capabilities. So we can also team with developers of the customer if they already have them. Uh, so we can do it jointly or we can train your IT staff. We have a training program for that uh, and they can do it themselves and they can do maintenance themselves later on. So it's, the goal is not to, to always be on board for every minor change you want to do. Um, and of course, to, to be clear about the licensing, of course, you also need a Mendex license um, to, in order to, you can, to use Mendex in general. But that's a different discussion which we can have, of course, how does the Mendex license work? I would suggest if you're interested in that, we can have a one-on-one -on -one call so we can explain how Mendex licensing in general is working. Excellent. Thank you, Yathro. On that note, uh, thank you to everyone who's joined this webinar for your time. A special thanks to Jan Van Oost from Siemens for taking the time to join us today and lend your expertise. Uh, Yathro, as usual, thank you for lending your expertise on the time series side. Uh, for everyone that joined the webinar, we have recorded this and we'll be sending it out um, at some point in the near future to everyone who registered for the webinar. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out uh, to us and at to us and ask them. Um, but thank you so much for your time and everyone have a great day.